I'm Daniel Wong, Director of Mentoring and Bridge Programs in the Graduate College Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. A critical aspect of our office's work is encouraging a sustainable student experience. In what follows, I'll be defining how we think of sustainability, especially in relation to the concept of productivity, and how you can maximize your effectiveness while finding balance and purpose in your work. I'd like to start with two definitions. First, we define sustainability as working and living at a pace that you can maintain indefinitely. It is my belief, widely supported by the research, that a sustainable approach to work is not only the most efficient, it is the most effective over the long term. Sustainable productivity means that our work and our rest are in harmony, each informing and fueling the other. This leads to the second definition, productivity, which I define as the practice of reliably generating useful and meaningful results. This implies two often overlooked aspects of work. The first is that productive does not mean busy. Simply completing a lot of low-level tasks, or keeping busy, while at times necessary, does not mean producing meaningful or useful data, insights, or even results. The second is that productivity does not require waiting for inspiration, but rather can be reliably managed and produced by a process. Guiding this discussion today are three principles that apply to three domains of life and work. The first principle is that our resources are finite. Whether it's energy, time, or money, we all have a limited amount. Pushing beyond these limits can lead to trouble, and adopting a sustainable approach to productivity means that we must know our limits, accept our limits, and manage our limits. For instance, if you know that you need seven hours of sleep a night, it would be foolish to consistently push the boundaries of sleep deprivation in the search for more productivity. In fact, all the research points to the fact that not only will you be less productive, your likelihood of getting sick increases tremendously when you are sleep deprived. Accepting this means managing your pursuits so that you can reliably get the sleep you need to be most effective and perhaps saying no to activities and commitments that don't advance your essential goals. The second principle is that sustainability maximizes the potential of our resources. This isn't something many people accept as a given. Many strategic procrastinators, and I used to be one, believe that they can't be productive without the adrenaline rush of an upcoming deadline. However, over time, such an approach can take a toll on the work-life harmony that lends itself to optimal, sustainable productivity. Working and living at a pace that you can maintain indefinitely leads, ultimately, to much more effective outcomes. Consider, according to productivity experts like Cal Newport, three to four hours a day is the maximum of high-level work, like writing, that anyone can do and sustain. But let's say you can only work for two hours a day for five days. This means 10 hours of high-level productivity per week. You can see how this would be a much more sustainable pace than trying to write once a week for 10 hours straight. Not only would that be very difficult to achieve, it's also a single point of failure. If you happen to be sick that day, you've missed at least two weeks of productivity, as your next writing opportunity won't be for another week. Compare this to a schedule in which you are writing every day. Missing one day means only missing two hours of productive work, a comparative loss of 20% of productivity on the week. The third and final principle is that to be most sustainably productive, we need to bias our resources toward what matters most. You'll notice that this principle doesn't say focus only on what matters most. That is because in order to maximize your sustainable effort, you must try to keep work and life in harmony. This may mean more rest some days and more work other days to maintain peak performance. Thus, we should always seek to bias our resources toward our most important goals, but not be willing to sacrifice anything and everything for those same ends, an ultimately ineffective and unhealthy approach long term. These three principles can be applied to the three primary domains of life in order to achieve sustainable productivity. These domains are sleep, rest, and work. We begin with sleep for two reasons. First, it is often the most neglected of the three domains. Second, it's arguably the most important in producing reliable and meaningful results. So, to be more productive, start with your sleep and work backwards. In other words, first figure out how much sleep you need each night, then schedule in the rest of your waking hours making sure to bias your time and resources toward what matters most to you. A lack of sleep has been shown to contribute to a host of issues, including short and long-term memory loss, increased impulsivity, 
and inability to maintain sustained attention, increased conflict due to persistent pessimism and irritability, and an increased likelihood of developing metabolic syndrome, the cluster of conditions that increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. For these reasons and many more, sleep appears to be the only solution. To maintain good sleep hygiene, consider the following suggestions. Identify a good cool-down routine and stick to it. If it works for toddlers, it can work for adults. One trick may be setting a sleep alarm for yourself every night. We all know about alarms to help you wake up. Perhaps just as important is a reminder to start to wind down for the evening to ensure you get the sleep you need. Insomnia, or the inability to sleep, can also be caused by worry or stress. Often, lying quietly at the end of the day can bring to mind unaccomplished tasks your active waking mind didn't have a chance to focus on. One strategy is to keep a pad by your nightstand to jot all of these ideas down. Writing down a to-do later list with a plan to accomplish the tasks, allows your mind to release the stress of worry. Finally, by maintaining a sustainable schedule, you can ensure that you protect what Dr. Matthew Walker calls a good sleep opportunity window. By not overscheduling yourself, and through some thoughtful planning, you can preserve time for the activity that many consider the most important for finding research breakthroughs, sleep. The next domain of life is rest. The scientific definition of rest is the absence of work. However, it is important to distinguish between the simple lack of work and the presence of good rest. Good rest is any non-work activity that returns more energy than it requires and that helps you to work more effectively. This can include exercise or sport, volunteering your time, socializing with friends, consuming media, books, television, films, participating in religious practices, or simply being still. Research by Ab Dijksterhaus, a Dutch psychologist, indicates that breaks in our attention give our unconscious mind time to grapple with a problem, bringing to bear information and cognitive processes unavailable to conscious deliberation. Thus, to really make the most out of intellectual work, we need to rest. Consider the following suggestions when evaluating the quality of your rest activities. First, be prepared to release activities that drain you more than refresh you. Lots of people enjoy a good Netflix or video game binge session. If you think back to the last time you overindulged, did you feel better or worse afterward? More or less energized? Sustainable productivity means biasing your time and resources toward rest activities that fulfill and energize you. This may mean cutting back on things that you enjoy, but do not nourish your physical, mental, or spiritual health. To evaluate this, consider taking a data-informed approach. Test your rest activities, measure them, and examine them. Keep a list of the things you do in a week and track how they make you feel. Honestly evaluate which activities refresh and which activities drain you. By taking your rest as seriously as you do your work, you will position yourself for sustainable success. The final domain of life we'll cover today is work. There are many ways to think about work, but I want you to consider two things, process and deep work. The first idea is that work is a process. It's as important to optimize how you work as it is to focus on the results of work. If you can find a sustainably productive pace of work, the results will work themselves out. So, it's often more helpful to focus on the process rather than on the results. Plus, an unhealthy obsession with results can add stress to your work and lead to performance anxiety. Work sustainably and consistently and let go of the outcome. Put another way, you can be goal-oriented but process focused. Second, most experts believe that you cannot sustainably work more than three or four hours a day at the highest level of concentration, what author and professor Cal Newport considers deep work. Deep work is any work requiring your full, undivided attention. This might be writing, planning, or strategizing. It is possible to push yourself beyond this limit occasionally, say, in pulling an all-nighter to finish a paper. But the goal is to find the number of deep work hours that you can sustain indefinitely, with no effects, day after day. If you can use your deep work time to accomplish one significant thing per day, you'll make great strides toward your goals in the long term, no matter what they are. Also, knowing that you only have at most four hours a day can help you to minimize busyness to focus on productive work. The final suggestion is to only count deep work. 
The boxer Muhammad Ali was once asked how many sit-ups he could do. He answered, I don't count my sit-ups. I only start counting when it starts hurting, because they're the only ones that count. In the same way, you should only count your deep work, as it is the work that will help you to achieve your goals. A few final thoughts. As you seek a path of sustainable productivity, remember to be patient with yourself. It will take time to adjust to the new process, to saying no more than you say yes. So be patient, but determined. Second, embrace the domino effect. Research have discovered that changing one behavior can activate a chain reaction to shift related behaviors as well. So focusing on deep work can lead to saying no to less impactful work, which can lead to higher levels of productivity and work satisfaction. Finally, consider the personal motto of world-renowned German industrial designer Dieter Rams, less but better. This can be transformational as we seek to create space in our lives and time to pursue the things that are most important to us. Thanks for listening today, and good luck as you pursue sustainable productivity.